everybody. It's Hazel here again, and I am joined today with Morwenna Bogano, who is the most delightful friend that I met while I was traveling in Thailand. And she was doing some energy healing work and uh, running some classes and some channeling at the rather exclusive uh, sanctuary on um, Had, Had Tien, isn't it? Uh, in yeah. Ho Pan Yang. And mm -hmm. uh, we became friends and actually continued our friendship as she then came back to the UK and came and did some channeling at one of the events that I was running up in Stroud called Revelations. Uh, and that was last year. And she's been a firm friend of the Revelations team, uh, bringing mm -hmm. not only herself, but her wonderful guides through to share their guidance and wisdom with uh, the listeners and the people that have attended these events in the past. And so uh, Moena was thrilled to be um, given the topic of the next uh, Revelations event because it's all about ascension consciousness and how we embody the, um, the vibrational frequency and maintain it. And this is something mm. that I know that your guides speak about all the time, don't they? Um, mm -hmm. So perhaps I can hand over to you and just firstly wish you a really warm welcome to uh, this next uh, event and also to share more for people who aren't even connected to the event about ascension consciousness and embodying the high vibrational frequencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hello everybody. It's so lovely to be connecting with you today and I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hazel, for inviting me to connect with you today to share. Um, yeah, so I connect with a group of angels, guides, and spiritual teachers, and I refer to them as the team of light. Many of them have been with me from a really young age, and then as my path developed, when I started following the path of really um, doing healing modalities, more and more of them started to show up in my energy healing sessions. So I start to see people being around the table who were helping me in my sessions. And then I built up this relationship with this working relationship with them. And then it went from kind of working in that way to then receiving messages and guidance. And then they had a very clear message that they wanted to share with the world and so I thought well okay I'm so happy to work with you guys and to share that out there because it feels really good and it, it feels very um, true in my heart and I know that a lot of people when they listen to the guides feel that as well mm -hmm. and it is exactly that it's all about ascension consciousness it's all about how we can really how really the journey in life is that of coming back home to ourselves and really knowing the depth of who we are and being able to step into our own power to create the life that we really want and that we really deserve. And their messages are all about love, all about how we should and can love ourselves and to realize the true power that we have within. Yeah. Uh Moena, I'm, I'm so thrilled that you're with us today and um, I've been watching your wonderful YouTube channel and uh, knowing just how many people are connecting in to these incredibly empowering messages at this important time um, for us as a collective uh, humanity that we're, we're going through some incredible shifts, uh, evolutionary leaps even. Um, where we'll hardly know ourselves in a few years time I think it will be uh, a transformational time and despite some of the bumpy things that might be going on actually things are heading in a very exciting direction aren't they absolutely yeah things are speeding up and we're <laughs> all on the ride so strap your seatbelts in guys <laughs> <laughs> indeed <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love yeah. the way that your guides also speak because they seem to get faster and faster as they get more and more excited about what they're sharing so it's um, true yeah you know, <laughs> and uh, um, you, you know I'm amazed that you can breathe sometimes as they're uh, so <laughs> sharing um, yeah I've benefited 
a lot from the wisdom that they've shared in the past. So I, I don't know if you're, you're ready to go into the paneling, if you want to explain anything mm -hmm. about it before you start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So what I will just say is that what my guides share and have told me is that when we are channeling, it's not only about the concepts and the words that you're receiving, but it's actually the vibrational frequency and the download of energy that you're receiving as you listen, because they are offering concepts in the form of energetic transmissions. And I'm acting as the um, translator of that. So I'm then making my con awareness take up as less space as possible. And I'm just translating that energy into words. So the words are kind of a byproduct of what's really going on. So just to open yourself up and to be open to receive the healing frequencies and the, the insights that come in, not only through the words that you hear. That's a really good point, actually, because sometimes you can come away from a channeling and almost need to listen to it again immediately because sometimes the words do seem to wash over you. Uh, yeah. It's really helpful to know that energetically it's almost as if it's just being downloaded into our system um, mm -hmm. not even remember some of the words although yep. i have to re-listen to these things and uh and find great uh, joy in finding out things that i'd missed the first time round. Mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> okay, okay so i'll over to you okay sure so i'll just take a couple of moments to tune in and i'll let you know when i'm ready Okay. Okay. So maybe while Mawena's doing this, everyone could just also just tune in and be open to receiving um, the wisdom, the, the downloads and the information, the codes, any healing that the guides are willing to give. They often say that they just need us to ask and uh, as we do that they are in a position where they can give us some of those things that we're ready to receive so i'll be quiet too um, to let you completely tune in we are so happy to be connecting with you once again hazel it is so wonderful to see you again Welcome, team of light. I know that uh, I'm just thrilled that you're back and uh, you're able to connect with those that have met you before as well. Yes, welcome everybody. I have a few questions. I wonder perhaps if that's how we might get going, is if I might ask you if you could share a little bit more about this whole concept of ascension consciousness and really help the people listening and watching to learn how to cultivate a vibrational frequency that is aligned to the direction in which humanity is going right now at these important times and also for uh, to help them maintain that frequency even if it's getting a little bumpy outside or that on the inside as well there are some some emotions that begin to surface yeah well we have so much to speak about today I thought so. well firstly let's begin with the topic of ascension consciousness and this is exactly the topic that is really sweeping the globe right now not only here on planet earth but universally there is an evolution taking place that is a movement in accelerating into a state of freedom and oneness and essentially what is taking place is that within the so let's speak about human consciousness in the terms of a collective consciousness because everybody who is part of the world and planet Earth is on their own accord having their own evolution of consciousness but they are also connected to everybody else on the planet also as you are all energetically connected and what's taking place is that 
those you can see it as different bandwidth of consciousness this is a way that we can explain it a little bit clearer and each bandwidth is starting to move upwards into the state of unity consciousness into remembering the truth of who they really are and what you are seeing is the breaking away and the the cracking of the limited perspective that has been in action and had a lot of movement and momentum over the years and it's starting to break down and through the cracks people are opening up into the newer ways of seeing and perceiving life of realizing and coming into a deeper understanding about themselves and coming into a deeper understanding about the meaning of life so it's almost like there is this shedding process that is taking place and the ones that are ready to evolve into the next step which is really being able to tune in and with their deeper sense of self that unlimited sense of self that is all expansive and connected to all things that is where their true power is these are the people that are now going through the transformation to be able to be engaged to that and connected to that deeper sense of self throughout their daily lives and what happens is that as those people in that bandwidth are, are in a way lovingly pushed or perhaps you might feel shoved sometimes in that direction are also helping the other people who are in other bandwidth that are maybe a little more sleepy to wake up as well because as they are raising their vibrational frequency there is a whole band of people that are doing it at the same time and this energy is a mutual collaboration that is taking place so that they are able to really solidify that vibrational frequency within themselves which is then also pulling up the people that are still a bit sleepy into that that uh, awakening state also so it's like a domino effect is starting to take place well has been taking place for a while but it is continuing now in a more accelerated rate so does that make sense to you it it makes sense and actually it really is helpful because i like the idea of the bandwidth and as one bandwidth moves up it actually pulls the others up uh, easily without um, having to be uh, uh, without anything external having to be done to them so to speak I think that's what you're implying isn't it that there's a yeah. change that takes place it is like a trigger effect from within it's like a uh, a language of the soul in a way that takes place and something is switched on within them and then all of these changes start to take place within them and they go on their own it's like their own journey is moving forth in a more accelerated rate rather than in more of a sleepy dormant state for a prolonged period of time so it's like taking the bears out of hibernation in a way yes and what happens to them and to people who are in you know the the initial bandwidth that's shifting um who are still perhaps um a little bit influenced by the systems and structures that we have been growing up in for so many decades. Yes, well, they are also starting to wake up and break free also because you see the essence of every human is to want to be feeling more whole and complete. and they're wanting to feel joy and fulfillment it's just a part of what is wired into the soul in a way and so the thing is that the systems that are have been in place and some of the ways that have been sort of blinkering people are not going to be lasting so long because the deeper yearnings and wantings of the need for fulfillment on a deep level is going to overtake that because when that sense of fulfillment and deeper joy is not completed then the human feels like there is an emptiness or something is missing 
and that will then drive them to seek what they are wanting. Although, depending on their state of being, it might drive them in a few uh, directions that don't work out so well, but sooner or later, they will be receiving new ideas that will give them and take them closer to what they are truly wanting to experience. So their own journey is unfolding. And the more there is clarity and movement and more and more people becoming in alignment with their heart and their truth allows that to infiltrate like a rain washing down all the way to those who are perhaps not even necessarily willing to look at the bigger meaning of life. They will get the urge to move uh, into the next step for them. So for example, when you're looking at it in this, and this is a way that we describe it, but it's not necessarily, this is a pictorial form of understanding. And it's, it's a way of describing something in words. But those who are near, let's just say near the, the scale at the bottom end where they are not quite aware of their truth, it does not mean that all of a sudden they will wake up and realize that they are a spiritual being having a human experience and and the depth of life, but it means that their eyes will become open to what the next step is for them on their path of evolution. So it's like this step-by-step -step process that starts opening up that finds alignment with with their deeper truths. And some people are ready to to, to fast track that and, and a lot of you a lot of those of you who are going to be connecting into this event with us are going to be those people. And then some people are just a little bit more slow at that, but everyone is going to be developing uh, at a faster rate in these coming times. And will there be any sort of uh, slowing down from the things that have been uh, keeping us in our sleepy state uh, that have been included in our food, our water, our medicines, um, in the air and things like that. Is there a change going to be happening that is synchronous with this urge that's coming from within each person? Yes, well the thing is people are first of all becoming more resistant to the, the mechanisms that are in place, so they're not really having as much effect as they once did. and people are becoming more aware, they are becoming more understanding of what is good for them and what is not good for them and they are acting more and choosing to act more in accordance with yeah. that. So people are finding their own inner strength and starting to see more clearly what is really going on and they make more informed decisions of how best to support themselves and that is the clarity that is really expanding. So there is an outgrowing of those Mm, patterns and systems that have been in place. So for somebody who perhaps is either new to this or as we all do so often need a little bit of a reminder, what might be some of the first steps that we can consciously start to take to raise our, our sort of consciousness or our, or our vibrational frequency even? Well, the first thing is to realize that you are an unlimited being and that actually the power that you see, so if you take a moment to think about whatever word you have for that all-encompassing energy and when you look at that or think about that energy of the universe, let's use that label for now, and you see that it is divine, that it has, it has power, and that it is a high frequency energy, it is all benevolent, and it is really realizing that that energy is what you are made of as well. There is not a separation. And what we find is that oftentimes people will see that energy of source consciousness or the universe as bigger and better than them and they will sometimes make themselves smaller than that but what we are wanting to re remind is that you are a part of the energy that creates universes and worlds and that it's only in remembering that and realizing that you are a part of the whole that you are able to also create and move in a way that is 
feels good to you in life and to create the life that you are wo really wanting to experience. So the main thing is that you in your physical form have the power to really of awareness and focus. So this is, is a way of really focusing on your heart center and on your own personal energy and your own vibrational frequency and in a, being able to maintain a state of harmony is what will then ripple out into your world and you'll start to see that reflected to you so it's a it's almost like a practice of self-awareness that you take with you in your daily life not only in smaller uh, parts throughout your day but it's a state of being and a state of awareness of tuning into how you are feeling and also what your energetic state is and you can tell this by whether you are feeling open-hearted whether you are feeling expanded whether you are feeling optimistic whether you're feeling like you are tuned into the synchronicities of life whether you are showing up at the right place at the right time this is the synchronicity that we are uh, speaking about here and that is your natural state of being yeah. and so when you are not feeling that if you're feeling more closed or like things are not going your way or you are stuck in uh, anxiety or, or worry loop then that is essentially a very different vibrational frequency which is in a way blocking the, the truth of life the essence of, of who and what you truly are so the real technique is to have your find your way of being able to come back to that peaceful and harmonious state of being by being able to tune into your heart and release the energy that is going on for you that is not serving you and to choose again to come back to that heart state center and from that peaceful center which will also start to shift things for you in your external world so it's that practice of mindfulness and coming back to center regularly which will allow for your life to shift and change to reflect that to you as well and it doesn't mean to push away negative feelings or negative thoughts you are having an experience of the full spectrum of things but when you allow yourself to come back into that state of harmony and beingness of watching then you can also feel those uncomfortable feelings but they have space to move and to move through and shift you'll notice they don't get stuck and you don't need to cling to them and you also don't need to push them down and repress them because that also keeps them there but just by coming into that state of peace and watching will allow for them to actually shift and move a lot faster and it automatically reprograms you and tunes you back in to your natural state of being in alignment with the divine. I think this is a really important topic. Um, thank you for sharing it. And maybe we could just dive a little bit more deeply into that because I think that a lot of people are noticing and perhaps it's the clearing up of unfinished business um, or some people may even be clearing things on behalf of the collective. But um, there are people that I'm certainly uh, connected to, whether they're clients or friends, even family, that are beginning to uh, feel certain things that are a surprise to them. Um, or they're recognizing that their ancestral wounds, if you like, that are, uh, are surfacing in order to be transformed. So again, if you could just, just remind us of the best ways that we can see them, as you said, and release them without being hooked into them. Well, we would say that this is, because everything is connected and you are an extension of your lineage in your human form, also, as well as all of the experience that you have within your soul, gathered and as you are choosing so this is also what happens when you are choosing the path of spiritual evolution the path of really 
being and embodying your true self and really doing what you came here to do, to be the embodied, heart-centered being that you came here to be, then you beam that out from you into everyone that surrounds you. And that also is anchoring that light into the planet for global healing. As you are part of the collective, you are also helping for healing on a planetary level. And all of those that are cho choosing that path are acting as anchors on Mother Earth, be anchoring that light. So together you formulate a network which is uplifting the vibrational frequency, which also means that you are shifting and passing through and healing a lot of the collective wounds or pains of the past to help in the evolution and ascension process. So if you are finding or feeling that you are having some wounds from your ancestry or lineage coming up, it is also perhaps worse if you are feeling that it is not necessary from your own direct experience, just to ask what it is and where it came from. This will also give you clarity and to also realize that you do not have to re-experience anybody's pain. And you do not have to re-experience the pain of the planet or the pain is not quite the right word but the all of the lower vibrational frequency energy that is being transmuted right now if you're feeling yourself feel that realizing that you do not have to feel and go through it in order to transmute it but the moment that you get a sensation from it simply ask what is this and where it came from you're likely that your intuition will give you an insight and just go with the first thing that comes and that feels true to you in your heart and then offer it up to the light. You do not have to. So one way of transmuting energy is through using the instrument of your body, but you are also able to transmute energy by seeing it, observing it, and then offering it to the light, asking for source consciousness to take this and to transmute it. So that is a way of you being able to still help if things are coming through naturally for you in a way without you having to go through the, the difficulty of transmuting it with your physical body also. And we advise in doing it that way because Mother Earth herself is having a big cleansing process and is shifting a lot of energy too. So beforehand, oftentimes people would offer this energy to be transmuted to the Earth also and she is good and capable at that but she is going through her own process too. So working with the divine energy of source consciousness is a very effective way of doing that right now on the planet. Yes, not overburdening our beloved Gaia in the process. Yeah. Yes, so um, that all feels really useful because it, it, I think we're beginning to move into times where we're noticing that this veil that we've been to told about is becoming thinner so that we're actually embodying more of our higher self. Would that be the way that you would explain how we are reaching these um, higher states of consciousness? Yes, yeah, so if you were to describe it like that as in energy, there was a lot of so it's also with the bandwidth that we were speaking about of consciousness, there are different densities. So it, it, it's like the, there was almost, if you were to describe it in a pictorial form, you could have seen it as a thick kind of smoggy energy okay. that kept, in a way, kept people a little bit confused or disconnected from themselves. But and that's also within the collective conscious from all of the history that has happened, all of the wars that have happened, all of the evolution, all of the healing that's been taking place. It, was, it could be seen like that, like a, a thick kind of smoggy energy. But that is now, just as you say, thinning and changing and it is being processed out. So now the connection to one's higher self and source consciousness is much more easy uh, to attain and to connect with and to maintain that vibrational frequency. And now the, the part of the cycle is in being able to practice maintaining that connection 
throughout your daily life as well and practicing that vibration of your truth within your daily life because essentially that is going to be giving you what you are really wanting on a deep level it gives you the it gives you the connection to the happiness the joy the love that you want to feel and all of the experiences that you are wanting on a deeper level are all within that vibrational frequency they're just different words and terms used to describe the same thing which is a deep sense of connection to true self yeah that's really helpful thank you for that um i'm curious to know how you would um guide people who are struggling with uh, friends or family who are not in the same bandwidth of consciousness and who may be almost draining their energy or feel, it may feel very difficult for them to be around. Yeah, and we can understand this. Now we want to explain something very important to you. So your family here on earth is your human family in physical form, but you also have soul family here on earth. Those of you who are of a similar soul resonance that you have known throughout eternity and had many, many journeys with, who are also on earth at this moment. So you will and do have a soul family that understands you on a deeper level and that is here, both of you to mutually collaborate and support each other on your journeys. And as you embark on this path and choose this path with your heart, of really returning home to yourself and your true self, you will see these people arrive into your life more and more if they have not already. And that is your deepest support system here on earth. And those are the people that are going to be supporting you on your journey and alike. And those are the people as well where you will have the ideas and the insights and the clarity coming from your conversation and you'll be doing the same when they speak with you. And so there is, so you can see it in that way. We want you to know that you do have soul family here as well. And as for physical family that are on a different bandwidth, let's say, or just not so ready to, to step into their path of, of evolution and growth at the same rate as perhaps you are, is to, come from a place of compassion and understanding. So it is true, this is a good place now to practice being in alignment with your truth because they also are likely to show you some of the patterns that you may have been working on within yourself to release so that you are able to move forth on your path to freedom. Mm -hmm. And it really is about maintaining. So seeing yourself as this evolving human you are not the same you that you were yesterday and you are not the same you that you were a month ago or even a few years ago but each day you are becoming the new version of you more and more close to your heart center and being tuned in and so it's also important to remain and to see yourself as that person rather than perhaps to revert back to personality traits or qualities that you had in the past that are associated with those family members as well. So you may find yourself sometimes being triggered back into old behaviors and be frustrated sometimes that it has awoken that within you. And to really maintain the center of who you are today and who you are now in their presence, but coming from an open heart space of compassion and being accepting and allowing of where they are on their personal journey as well. You cannot force anybody to do anything, but each person is on their own journey and that is sacred within itself. No journey is better than any other. You must remember that. Absolutely. How are we to know how many less or more lives each person has had and where they are on their, their own amazing journey of ev evolution as um, I, I actually really love the fact that you've reminded us that this is an, a perfect um, environment for us to practice our compassion and 
put to test ourselves in a, in, a, in the way of um, reuniting with our heart energy and being love despite what perhaps is um, coming to us with words or with actions or behavior from other people who are not yet quite so ready um, to embody these new ways of being. Uh, practice, yeah. practice with compassion and going into the heart, that's so beautiful. And what you may find as well is if you continuously do this, you may well find that they start to change and gravitate into that energy as well. Yeah. So you may well find that more peace or harmony starts to ripple out within your relationship with them also. It's funny because some friends and I have a saying that uh, I'm sure many other people know and that is to know and not to do is not to know and uh, it really comes down to that doesn't it? It's actually despite everything we know sometimes we forget to embody those uh, the knowings and we can easily re revert back to old personalities that we had when we were younger. So uh, this is a perfect environment for us to grow and uh, to be at peace with whatever is occurring. Yes, because you see, when you are able to cultivate that, you will notice that if you are able to cultivate a strong connection to your heart center, no matter what is going on, the things that really bothered you before when you were outside of that state of being, less affect you and you are able to contain and maintain that state of centeredness and we understand with some family members it might take a lot of practice but that's okay too because it is teaching you and strengthening that ability within you and you'll notice that once you have got it that the your teachers the ones that bring that up for you start to mm, become less because you've already got it yes. and essentially with the embodying of knowledge it is about simplifying and breaking things down because you see when things are put into words it can go off in so many different ways and there are so many different explanations and words to use that that it can just become quite a lot of information and a bit messy at times but if you were to break it down into really simple terms, which is for you to manage your vibrational frequency and to activate your heart center and to be in that good feeling place because your heart is like your magnetic center. If you can have this open and activated and be in that energy full for as long as possible, then that is as simple as it is. You will be feeling in alignment and you will be in alignment with the divine synchronicities and positively influencing all of the people around you and also starting to shift the experiences of your life in the same resonating ways as well. Fantastic. Um, and that really leads me to ask, can you tell us a little bit more about what we're going to be experiencing as we are fully embodying these higher frequencies and we're moving into new times here on Earth. Um, maybe more about the journey we're taking or, or the destination even, not, not really a destination because I know we never really end a journey, but um, can you give us some insights? Yes, well, the purpose of this evolution is for each person to be feeling fulfilled and and creating more love and support in the world so what this means is that each individual person's journey of this coming back into the heart center and reactivating their heart center it has this domino effect of then the people that you come in contact with also start to come into that vibrational frequency you would be surprised that some people who have perhaps for various reasons chosen subconsciously perhaps to close their hearts because they've had difficult life experiences and maybe they are, they are known 
as the grumpy old man down the road, for example. But something magical happens when then you show up or pass them by and greet them with an open heart. Perhaps the first response won't be that wonderful, but over time you might just notice that he starts to take a liking to you and that he starts to smile back and that he starts to greet you back. And that is because you coming from that space is reminding people and activating that within others as well. And what you are likely to find is that also you are going to be uniting with other people to be spreading those seeds far and wide. So we have been mentioning for some time now that there is an, uh, an evolution of collaboration taking place. So that means that people that were perhaps before used to working on their own, in their own space, and now taking that into hosting workshops and working with groups of people, spreading the energy and the positive um, vibrational frequency with wider groups of people. And so that's what's really happening right now. That is the way that things are moving. There is more collaboration and more raising of the vibrational frequency and activating of heart spaces um, in, in groups of people, in collectives, just as in this, group that you are all in an into well and so that's the movement that's going to be taking place as that is also what's going to be accelerating the ascension process here on earth it's going to be what heals and anchors more light into mother earth and also realizing that everything that takes place on mother earth also has got um a, an effect in the wider scheme of things within the universe as well so you are also having a positive effect on the order of the universe too. It's, it's a real blessing to be here at this time, isn't it? Uh, I'm curious to find out a little bit on your um, perspective regarding uh, people being in community. It feels as though there's been quite a breakdown of community um, and yet I think breaking down gives us the opportunity to rebuild in a new way uh, communities. Do you feel that there's going to be some way that people are going to be drawing together in like-minded and like-hearted ways so they can live more closely connected to each other? Or are we sort of still in the process of uh, almost being beacons of light in various uh, locations separated from each other? Well, it is the both of the things are happening. So each, so there are still beacons of light separated out throughout the, the different areas. But what's happening is that there's this, the next cycle is happening for these beacons of light where uh, th that, that is reflected ex exactly very well that now those beacons of light are drawing to them more of those like-minded people that are also beacons of light. So there's like a reuniting and a grouping of people that take place, which then also supports the process. There's this the global support system that happens also physically. So this is in gatherings or, or meetings or workshops that are taking place. And so that's what we would say the community is. And it's not necessarily the community of how things used to be where people would physically live together or very close by, but it's more of a mobile community that travels around the world, going to different um, energy points around the world to do their work and to, to host what they are wanting to host and share in the world. And that those other beacons of light will be the ones that will be attending those, those groups as well. And then everyone will be moving around and doing their own thing on the globe. So it's more like groupings coming together and more of a global community in that way we would describe. And an online community as well through uh, lots of people doing the, the recordings like this that are helpful to reach um, people yeah. who not be able to actually physically attend gathering. Yes, and so this is it. So it's almost like we're now changing the way that we that community is seen. So rather than seeing community as a physical gathering of physical bodies in one place, it's more of a gathering of 
consciousnesses in one place. Yes. Yeah. Do you think we will also be starting to create more beautiful villages and towns of like-minded and like-hearted people? Certainly. Yeah. This is happening already where like-minded people are gathering and and creating communities around the world and hold a similar vision so this is going to be also accelerating and is already in process mm, this is wonderful would you would you do you have anything else you'd like to share before we say goodbye for this particular um, conversation uh, or, or summarize some of the key points that you think would be useful for people to just spend some time focusing on as uh, as we sign off well we would say that although you have been receiving a lot of information just remember that everything that you do receive is vibrational frequency and so the energies that speak to you and you were receiving are also allowing for shifts and changes to take place with you so that you are more in alignment with your truth and more heart activated and so really the essence of all of the sharings that we have been sharing with you today is to simplify things and to simply Start your day by coming into your heart center, activating your heart center, and creating a clear vision of what you are wanting in your life, and to sit in that activated heart energy, which is the essence of your being, and to practice that feeling as frequently as you can, throughout your day because that is what will start to change your reality from the energetic perspective. Everything begins from energy and the final point of manifestation is the physical. So you are starting at the beginning of manifestation by tuning in and activating your heart center and maintaining as much as possible within that vibrational frequency. So in order to activate your heart center, what technique would you suggest to people? Just feel an elevated emotion, just tune in, or could they just simply use their intention? Yes, by simply using your intention. So we would say for you to sit quietly for at least five minutes. And with your intention, you can start to take your awareness onto your heart chakra and with your intention activate this heart chakra see and feel it activating and opening up filling with green light and allowing for that green light to then just expand into every single cell of your being being completely filled with this green light which then expands out even further beyond you to fill up your whole aura your whole body's magnetic field and then within that, allowing it to ripple out into the universe. So you are shining beacon of green heart energy. And just as you said, you really are magnetic then. You're going to start drawing to you uh, energy of similar vibration. And, and that can only be good if you're starting off at a, a, a really very loving uh, frequency. Yeah and you'll simultaneously be drawing these things to you and you will also at the same time be drawn to them and find yourself in the flow of synchronicity. Yes. Well, beings of light, thank you so much for sharing uh, this information. It feels as though there's an awful lot more that you can share. So when Morwenna comes back, I'll invite her to share some of the work that you're doing with her so that people can find out how they can stay in touch with you uh, through Morwenna. But obviously I know they can call on you through uh, their intention at any time as well. Yes, we are always here to serve. Thank you so much for coming and uh, being part of this transmission. 
uh, where full of love and heart felt joy at the connections that we're making with beings of light such as yourselves. And we are so happy to have connected with you today. We send you so much love and light. Just let Morwenna come fully back into her body and be fully grounded again. Um, welcome back, Morwenna. Mm. Um, absolutely <laughs> wonderful to chat with your guides. Are you aware of what they've been saying or, or do you head off somewhere so you, you don't know? Mm. Yeah, so I I have I have um like a, a brief awareness. If you were to ask me right now, I wouldn't be able to really tell you exactly what we spoke about. But once you start speaking about it, it kind of reactivates the energy again. And yeah. um, I can get the sense of, of what was being shared. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, you can, you, it, it was wonderful, really useful. And uh, it's so lovely for me to connect with them again. Um, mm. It's, uh, it's a, such a beautiful transmission of light and love and uh, enthusiasm for what we're going through. So supportive. Um, mm -hmm. And I was really keen. I, I don't know if you're feeling completely back yet, but I was really mm -hmm. keen for you to share with people about how people might find out more from these guides, from some of the work that you're doing together with them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I'm just coming back. <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, so absolutely. So um, I work with the guides in healing sessions and channeling sessions. And I've just created my brand new online course, The Empowered Soul, which um, I created. So I had help from the guides. And I created specifically for those who are on their spiritual journey of evolution and who make that a, a priority in their life. And we all know that they speak a lot about raising our vibrational frequency. And we all know that to be the best version of ourselves and to fulfill our full potential, mm -hmm. that we need to raise our vibrational frequency. Um, but through positive thinking alone, it's just not enough. I've been there and I know, and it's just not enough. So what I did was I created the Empowered Soul online course with all of these tools and techniques that help us to manage our energy, to be able to understand how vibrational frequency works, how emotions work, how our energy system works, all about the chakras, how to tune into source consciousness to be able to balance our energy, to be able to do healing for ourselves and also for manifesting. And it's all the, the, I've also got the tools in there where we most trip up on our journeys, the bit where we get stuck as well. So it's all the tools in there for that as well. And we cover a lot of things, but it's done in, in bite-sized pieces as well um, with processes for you to do to actually be able to do that and embody these things as well. So there's daily processes that you can do in there too. Yeah. So, um, uh -huh. so how do people find out more about that? Um, yeah. So you can, you can um, go onto my website, uh, moenabagano.com. Um, I'll put a link just after this video so people can just click on it and they can check it out there. Yeah. And uh, I'm offering everybody at Revelations a discount. Usually it's $97 to 77, which makes it about 57 pounds for the whole online course. And there's a lot of content in there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And how many, yeah. how many sections to it? There's a lot. So there's um, nine, there's nine sections. Yeah. And then each section has got different classes in it as well. And there are different meditations and processes to do. Yeah. Fantastic. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's something that um, would be really exciting to do because, yeah, as you say, it's something that's in bite-sized chunks. We can um, yeah. we can practice and return mm -hmm. them. if it's online. We can return presumably. Exactly. Yeah. 
uh, as absolutely, a absolutely. And it was it was um, really it was really interesting to do because obviously when I was making the course, I was putting all of these different things that I've used and learnt from from all of my years as a channeler and a healer with clients on my own journey. But I was taking all of these things and putting them into one place, and so I was doing them myself. And the changes that took place over the two weeks where I was doing everything myself was yes. incredible. Like it was both, because I told my mum about it, she was visiting me, and yeah. we were both blown away at how fast some of these things changed in my life as well. So I think that's actually a really good point, Moena. Things that took a while years ago are faster, that we're able to activate things much more quickly, we're able to let go of things faster and yeah. sort of move up to the next stage because as you've sort of alluded to and many of the people listening know, we are really having such an opportunity to maximise our experience here on earth and to mm -hmm. um, raise our frequency, whether it's so that we fully, fully, fully enjoy this life, but also mm -hmm. as we're in our reincarnation cycle, we have even more opportunities in our following lives. So it's just a, a, a kind of ongoing win, win, win. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is the time for it. We have so much freedom right now. Um, to do that, to really just play and create the life that we want and to... The, the creating exactly. of our lives. And uh, I don't think this new time on earth has been called the golden age for no reason. So I think that mm -hmm. itself gives us, can actually um, start to uh, trigger a feeling of anticipation um, within us that is a positive expectation um, for really, really great things to happen where we're not only going to be, it's, this isn't about us having, having everything. This is about how we can all help one another and collaborate so that we all can experience great times here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> I love the fact that, um, you know, we, we talk about uh, coming back to our soul family and reconnecting in all sorts of different locations. And that's certainly what it feels like with you, Moena. To yeah. <laughs> Moena's currently in Mexico, as you can see from her wonderful, all, <clears throat> excuse me, all year round tan. <laughs> She's a bit of a global nomad, aren't you, at the moment? Um, yeah. <laughs> and spreading your light throughout all sorts of wonderful places. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's it's great to be able to stay in touch with you, Moena. And I'm thrilled that you're popping back to the UK, as you can see. Yes. She is a Brit. Um, yep. <laughs> and, um, she'll be visiting in April and May, which is wonderful. Yeah, I look forward to that. You have your YouTube channel, you have mm -hmm. this amazing uh, online course. Uh, yes. What's it called again? Your Souls. The Empowered Soul. The Empowered mm -hmm. Soul. Yeah, self-empowerment. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, um, absolutely. Yes, and I'll put links and things so people can find you and connect. Perfect. You. Yeah, and if anyone needs a one-on-one -on -one session, I do channeling and healing as well with, exactly. yeah, 15% off for you guys. <laughs> That's fantastic. And yeah. um, I know I've had a session, I've had several sessions with Moena, but so as my daughter and uh, we've both benefited so much. So uh, I can fully really recommend them. Mm. So thank you so much. Um, we will uh, be in touch again very soon and uh, we'll sign off now. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Hazel. It's been wonderful. And I wish everybody so much love and have a wonderful, wonderful time. It's been amazing to connect with you from my heart to yours. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.